Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to get Salesforce certifications quickly and wisely uh, because there's a lot of different ways to go about getting certifications. Not all of them are quick, not all of them are wise. First of all, don't cheat on Salesforce certifications. Don't use dumps. You need to learn the knowledge that you're gonna get for Salesforce certifications to be able to use them in your job. If you use dumps and you use that to get certifications, you're not going to be learning anything. It's not going to help you. You will be found out that you don't know what you're talking about in your job, and you are likely going to get your Salesforce certifications taken away. Um, there have been so many times that, at least in my experience, that Salesforce professionals have used dumps and that their knowledge was not up to the level that their certification showed and it's been really difficult on the team. The project was delayed or it was delivered extremely poorly and the whole team has suffered. So please, for the sake of everyone, including yourself, including any of your team members, do not use dumps. Please just learn what you're gonna learn and get the certifications properly. Let's go ahead and jump into how to actually get Salesforce certifications quickly. I want you to choose your Salesforce certifications wisely. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And there's kind of two things that you want to keep in mind when you're choosing your Salesforce certifications. And this is of course, after you get the associate and the admin, and you're trying to decide which certification should I get next. So keep in mind two things. One, what your day-to-day -day job is like right now. Two, where you wanna go. So let's say you are working your first admin job and you eventually want to go into consulting. Currently, you are working hands-on with Sales Cloud. You are working hands-on with um, Service Cloud. And that's kind of what you're doing with your day-to-day -day job. So you're learning a lot about those two specific things all day, every day. Maybe you are also talking with users. So when you have these two things, as well as that goal of eventually becoming a consultant, I would personally look to merge the two or marry those two things together in a certification. So when you're using Sales Cloud a lot, I would learn and get ready for the Sales Cloud certification because you're already learning it. You can use those real world examples that you're learning and that you're working with in your day to day. And then it's also helping you get a consultant certification to hopefully help you get a consultant job further down the line. <laughs> Same with Service Cloud. You're using Service Cloud all day, every day. You're learning the ins and outs of using Service Cloud, the automations, you're using how to work with your clients or the in-house company that you are currently working for, and you could benefit by learning more about Service Cloud. So start studying for that certification. And oftentimes what I find is when I'm studying for the certification, I find solutions to my problems that I'm working with in the day-to-day. -day. So it's kind of like this harmonious relationship between the two where during the day at your job, you are learning things that will help you on the certification. And then when you're studying for the certification, you are learning things that are going to help you at your job. This is great all around. And then at the end, you get another Salesforce certification that was fairly easy to pick up. Then if you were going with something completely unrelated to what you're working on at your day-to-day -day job. And oftentimes what I'll find is once I'm done with one type of implementation, then it'll be moving on to another type of implementation in another section of Salesforce. Now you can use let's say this sales and service cloud experience to go and then get other certifications. So even if you wanted to go towards that consultant role, then maybe you could start working towards a business analyst certification by learning how to ask questions in your job about what your customers, your clients, your in-house company that you're working for, what they actually want um, and how to set up user stories and how to make that project process go a lot smoother. Now, this doesn't necessarily just have to be um, so straightforward as you are learning um, Service Cloud and Sales Cloud, so you're getting those certifications. What happens after that if you're still wanting to stay at your current position and you wanna get more certifications? Now, there's tons of certifications that you could get for Salesforce. You could work on moving into the App Builder certification and maybe your Data Architect or your Data Cloud Consultant certification or your sharing and visibility. Those are going to be more general Salesforce certifications that you can learn then to work towards an architect certification path rather than just your consultant certification path. And now these also don't necessarily have to be just strictly Salesforce certifications. They could also be for Slack. They could be for Tableau. You could work on getting Salesforce adjacent certifications like Capato. You could get your certified Scrum Master certification, a bunch of other ones that are going to help your Salesforce knowledge increase, even though it might not just be strictly Salesforce. All right, my second tip as far as getting Salesforce certifications quickly is to use all the resources that you can that are budget friendly for you. 
depending on what your budget is. If your company is paying for your certification material, then I would see what their budget is and maybe see if I could attend an in-person certification prep class offered by Salesforce. If they are not paying for my certification prep material, then Trailhead is where I would usually start. I would look at YouTube videos, I would look for Udemy courses or other off-site courses, um, or focus on force for practice exams. If you want to check out my certification courses, you can check that out down below or on salesforceupskill.com. We've worked really hard to create those resources for you guys. But there are both paid and free resources that you can use, and I would not skimp out on these. I would use these as much as I possibly could to help me get those certifications. If something is going to make my life a lot more simple, a lot more streamlined, then I'm prone to use that as long as it fits within my budget. Number three, I want you to commit to a timeline. There's a saying is that you will take as much time as you give yourself to do something. So if you have the whole Saturday to clean the house, it's going to take you the whole Saturday to clean the house. If you have uh, like an hour to clean the house, you're gonna take an hour to clean the house. When you are on a stricter timeline, you are going to do the things and you're gonna be forced into doing the things that will help you achieve that goal. Now, some things are unreasonable. If I were to study for PD-1 and try and take it later tonight, uh, I'm not gonna do that great because I don't know that much about code and I don't know enough about code to take the certification tonight. I might be able to get a 30%, but that's definitely not enough to pass. So really commit to your timeline, make a fairly reasonable but tight timeline to be able to study for and pass that next certification that you're going to get. Go ahead and pay for it, schedule it. In a lot of circles, that's called a forcing function where it forces you to do something. I find that really, really useful to getting certifications and committing to studying. Number four is going to be teach what you're learning. So there's two parts to this. One, um, a little bit of background about me was before I switched into a business degree path, I was a teaching major. And one of the teaching methodologies that you learn is that um, when kids or just adults or anyone are going to learn something, if you're learning to teach it to someone else, you're gonna learn it a lot better a lot faster, a lot quicker than if you were just learning it to learn it. So that's part of the reason why actually why I started this YouTube channel was I teach what I'm learning. I teach that I'm learning about Experience Cloud. So if I have a question about Experience Cloud, you know for sure I'm gonna be making a video on it once I figure it out. It is a lot easier for you to then remember it on the exam if you've already taught it. So uh, creating blog posts about it, if you're not super into video, create LinkedIn posts about it, create Twitter posts, threads about it, create YouTube videos about it, whatever platform, whatever medium you want to teach it, just teach it. I also get a lot of questions about, well, should I be afraid to post? No, nope, don't be afraid to post. Um, just share it from a viewpoint that you're saying, hey, I'm sharing what I'm learning. I'm sharing it so then other people can then take my experience and hopefully their struggles will be less than my own. And that's another huge reason why I started my YouTube channel was because I was spending hours researching something that could have been explained in a two minute YouTube video to me. Teach what you're learning. Don't be afraid to share, especially if you're sharing it from the viewpoint of this is what I'm learning. This is the struggle I'm having. This is how I solved it. So number five is going to be using practice exams. Um, practice exams are going to help you twofold. First, it is going to gauge how close you are to passing. So once you have learned a lot of the material, or let's say you have chosen the Sales Cloud certification because you've been working on Sales Cloud for about six months, or that's been your main focus for however long, take a pre-test or a pre-practice exam to see how close you are. If you could maybe pass it just right away, that would be fantastic, but most of the time not, and you have some places to study. Number two is if it's a good practice certification exam, it will show you what sections you need to work on the most. So it will show you, hey, I need to focus more on learning forecasts, or I need to focus more on the data structure of Sales Cloud, or I need to learn more about the native product um, offering of Salesforce, then it'll tell you, hey, look, you need to go study in this section and it'll really guide you to where you need to go focus your study hours. And then you can come back to the certification practice exams, take another one, gauge where you are, if you're getting close enough to where you'd be able to, and comfortable to pass, um, and then where you should focus your study next. And number six is going to be, see if your employer will pay for it. I know a lot of different places, if you're a Salesforce admin, they will pay for your certifications. Especially consulting firms will pay for certain certifications if it helps them to 
uh, level up with their partner program with Salesforce. So that will usually take off some of the financial burden. Sometimes it's they will pay for it or they will reimburse you for it if you passed. And if they are going to be paying for your certifications, depending on if they're just paying for architecture certifications or on the architecture path, or if they will pay for all of your Salesforce certifications, I think it's worth it to check. And then if they do pay for it, then please, by all means, get as many certifications with them as you can to then level up your career. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, don't use dumps, don't ever use dumps, just learn the information. Connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.